Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2021 Ford F-350, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 air helper springs for the rear axle. But before we get into that, why don't we just take a minute, check these out and make sure that they're gonna work for you. Usually what we like to do is get a bunch of weight. We got a big water tank and put it in the bed of the truck. That way we can get some weight over the axle and really test out those airbags. Uh, today though, that is full of stuff and we're not gonna be shuffling all that around. Um, so we're gonna do the next best thing, which is just drive around with our airbags on, unloaded, because I do feel like that's important. Um, you're not always gonna be towing. And you know, some people say the bags affect the ride when you're unloaded, others say it doesn't, and every truck's just a little bit different. So we'll see at the very least how this one does. Uh, I will say I have done a ton of different airbags in the past. Uh, on these models of Fords, whether it be the late model 350, 450, 250, uh, we've done a lot of them and they all kind of respond the same um, with weight when I was able to do that. Um, and really the main difference you're gonna be able to feel is that the truck suspension actually has some additional support. It's not gonna be working as hard. You know, when you hit a bump, it recovers a lot faster uh, and keeps your truck level and it's just a, a more comfortable driving experience. And that even holds true uh, when you're going around turns, you know, usually you get a little of that body roll and whatnot. The airbags are gonna combat that and keep your truck planted and straight. So now that we've driven around a little bit, let's see what the bags look like under the truck. I do wanna to mention too, you are gonna be able to put your spare tire and your heat shield and stuff back. Uh, you just have it off so we can actually see what we're doing and, and check these out a little bit better. But with that in mind, uh, the way the airbag's gonna work is, is pretty straightforward. They're gonna replace your factory Johns pumpers and they're gonna fill that gap in between your frame rail and your axle tube. And so it's almost gonna act as like a cushion, right? And the more air you put in, the more support you're gonna get and so on. And, you know, these are an upgrade over the Johns pumpers. So this is what's there from the factory. It just bolts up and this doesn't provide any additional support. All this does is prevent your suspension from bottoming out. And so the bags are really gonna uh, uh, help keep everything level and give it that extra support. One of the cool things about airbags is the fact that they're adjustable, right? So you can run a minimum of five pounds in here all the way up to 100 PSI. So you can really fine tune them um, you know, depending on your load, if you got a lighter load, obviously use less, heavier load, use more, um, and you can find, find what you like. Uh, to make that easier, uh, you can always use a compressor too. I like the Airlift, the easy uh, mount wireless one. Had a lot of good luck with them. Um, and that also, using a compressor will kind of take care of your maintenance as well because the bags do require you to have at least five pounds of air in them right and if you don't if you ignore that the bag could potentially get damaged and, and create a, uh, uh, a hazardous situation so keep that in mind you know on them on them fall days and stuff where it's a little warmer out and cooler overnight you know pressures drop so uh, keep that in the back of your mind um, compared to some of the other suspension enhancements you know it's really just going to depend on what you're trying to do there's uh, other ones that are similar to John's bumpers, right? But they're a lot bigger and beefier and uh, progressive, which means they'll get stiffer as, as the load increases. Uh, essentially those will just kind of bolt right up and replace those John's bumpers. I like them, uh, but it kind of depends on what you're gonna be doing. Let's say if you're, you know, you, you tow occasionally or something that might be better because there's no maintenance involved with those, but the downside is they're they're not adjustable, so you kind of get what you get. So uh, having an airbag is, is uh, gonna let you fine tune everything to your particular liking. Other than that though, you know, if you're looking for a good way to uh, kind of tweak your suspension, so to speak, and, and get some extra support, these are gonna be a good option for you. Uh, as far as the installation goes, when it comes to airbags, some of them are a real pain to do, others aren't bad at all. And these uh, fall in that category. They weren't too bad, really. Uh, essentially, uh, what the nice thing, essentially you build the whole assembly on the workbench for the most part and then kind of drop it in and just tighten everything down and bolt it all down and uh, run your lines, your airlines, and, and that's really about it. So 
As long as you stay focused, shouldn't run into too many issues, but speaking of that, why don't we go ahead and put them all together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here underneath the back of our truck, and I temporarily just uh, lowered and removed our spare tire, give us more room to work. Same thing, there's a small heat shield that'll be here. Uh, I took that down as well, just three, uh, three nuts you gotta remove to get that off. And with that said, uh, you're gonna to wanna to support your truck by the frame rails. So I'm on a drive on lift, uh, so I'm using a pull jack here to to put pressure up on our frame. And what we're looking to do is increase the distance between the bottom of our frame rail and the top of our axle tube, just to give us more space to work. It's easier to get the bag in. So for those of you at home, you wanna jack your truck up by the frame. Um, and then obviously you use all the appropriate safety measures to, uh, to make sure everything's supported properly. But with that said, uh, first things first, we're gonna remove our factory Johns bumper, which is this piece here. And that's held in place by two 15 millimeter nuts. Set that down and then I can grab a flathead screwdriver. And there's gonna be these keepers in there. And so you can just kind of pry down on them and work them out. So in these holes here, we're gonna put in uh, these parts. So it's kind of just a clip that has a threaded portion on the back of it. I already did this one here, but um, this one will be the same. I'm just gonna take it and essentially just kind of push it in until it stops. Now what we're able to do is grab our upper bracket. And so you wanna uh, you know, position these in a certain manner. So you want this U-shaped portion here to be facing towards the center of the truck or inboard. And then the one opening up here is gonna be slotted and you want that to face towards the front of the truck. And in each corner, there's gonna be a square hole just like this one here. And you're gonna to wanna to take a carriage bolt like this and drop that in. And what I like to do is just take a piece of tape And just kind of tape it down and it just kind of helps hold it in place and that way later on when we go to put the nuts on here it kind of support it a little bit and they're not moving around and and uh, kind of being a pain with our upper bracket all set up now we can get it bolted up there and so you're going to be using these types of bolts here again make sure you have it positioned correctly with that oval shaped or slotted hole towards the front and this U-shaped notch facing towards the center of the truck. And so I'm just gonna get these started. And I'm using a, I believe this is a yeah, six millimeter uh, Allen key. With those bolts uh, snug, we'll come back with a torque wrench and tighten them down to the amount specified in the instructions. And from this point on, uh, all the hardware that we torque, they do list set information and the instructions. Now what we can do is start to set up our airbag. So the side of the air spring that has three fittings, that's gonna be the top. That one will be where the air actually goes into the bag. So you can take the roll plate here, set it on there like that. Take the fitting and get it started as tight as you can by hand. And then come back with a half inch wrench. And we're gonna tighten it down about another turn and a half. Sometimes I'll go a little more. You can just kind of play it by feel. You know, you don't want it to be super tight because being brass, you can crack it pretty easy. So um, that feels pretty good there. We could take our upper bracket all right, and you're gonna, how you're gonna do this, so for example, we're obviously on the driver's side, this is gonna face, this bent part's gonna face towards the front, and you're gonna use those inside holes there. So those will line up. Then you can take one of these bolts, a split lock washer, 
and a flat washer. And get both of them started hand tight. Back with a 916 size socket. Snug those down and then I'll grab my torque wrench, set it, and torque them down. With that torqued, now we can flip this over and get the rest of our brackets uh, set up on it here. So take the roll plate, put it over that and it's gonna kind of scooch this over real quick. Take our lower bracket, which is this one here. This is gonna set up on here like this. Um, so you want this flange side to face away or be on the opposite side of the bag that our air fitting is. So our air fitting is facing me, the flange is facing uh, away from me. But before you put that up there, you set it like that. We're gonna have these super long carriage bolts. All right. We're gonna put through them holes. I get to stay here. Just like the others, I'm gonna put a piece of tape on them. Take this and we're actually gonna move over to a table now because if these sticking up, I'm not gonna have the room I need with our truck in the way here. Now we got some more space here. Gonna line that on up. Then you're gonna take these tapered Allen key bolts. Get those started. With these I'm using a, I believe it's a 730 seconds, yeah, 730 seconds size Allen key. Then we're gonna have this bracket here. You want this slotted hole to line up with this square hole. So this will go over it like so. And you'll have a small carriage bolt. I'll go up like that and then take the flange nut and you just want to run this down by hand. You want it, uh, you know, loose enough that you can still kind of uh, move this piece around and then later on we'll come back and completely tighten this once this bracket is kind of set where it needs to go. But uh, now I believe we should be able to get this up in place underneath our truck. Now we can set our assembly in. When you're doing this, obviously, try not to pinch any wires or, you know, just start ripping stuff apart here. Kind of finesse it in there if you can. And this should, this plate here, you might have to kind of pull down on it to get it lined up with our bolts up top there. make sure this is pushed flat against the leaf spring pack here and that this uh, piece that we left loose you want that to, to sit on the strike plate as well this little piece above our axle tube so everything seems pretty good lined up um, over on the driver's side here you want your bolt to uh, this big carriage bolt to go in between the brake line and the axle tube on the passenger side, this bolt is actually gonna go on the outside or behind the brake line. So now we should be able to start getting everything bolted up. Where our bolts uh, come through right here, all four of them, we're gonna wanna take the flange nuts and get those started hand tight. I already did the ones in front of the bag. And then we can start to grab some of our other hardware. Uh, one of them being this big U-bolt. And what you're gonna do with this is actually wrap it around our leaf spring pack. 
and go through the lower bracket and you want to go through the uppermost hole on each side. So we'll get that lined up. And on each end of that, you're going to take flat washer and a nylon lock nut. Get that started. And do the same thing on the other side here. And then really the bracket that we have left is this one. So this will go on our long carriage bolts here. Push that up flat. And again, on each end of that, you're gonna take flat washer and a nylon lock nut. So now we're gonna to wanna to snug these down first, our U-bolts here. When you tighten these up, uh, you wanna run them down evenly. So do this side for a few seconds, other side, back and forth. We're not trying to completely tighten them down just yet. We just essentially wanna snug it up and draw everything uh, tight together. Now we can use the 916s to snug up all of these flange nuts up here. I already did the ones up front, so those are snug. Then we'll come back with our torque wrench and torque them down. From there, I just came back and tightened and torqued everything else down. So our axle strap here, just like the U-bolt, you wanna run these up evenly that way it draws up uh, correctly torque them down and then if you remember we just left these snug so i came back and finished torquing those down and then there was that bolt that little carriage bolt that we left loose uh, that was attaching our little cup here uh, i came back and, and torqued that down to the spec as well so that's really it for this airbag um, and what we can do now is work on getting the other one in, which I've done already. And essentially it's set up the exact same way, uh, you know, minus the, I always said the brake line, you know, this one would go in front of the brake line instead of behind it. So that's how that's set up. Um, you know, if it's close, you can always kind of bend this out of the way a little bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, just make sure it's not rubbing. And then the only difference too is they're gonna give you this heat shield um, and some clamps. And you just put this over your exhaust, you know, where it's closest to the airbag and simply just clamp it down on there. Now that we have both the bags in, we need to figure out where we want to mount up our inflation valves. Um, that way we can mount them up and run our, our air lines over to them. So in most cases, uh, what we usually do is, or what I usually do, is actually take out the license plate screws and the little plastic keepers and actually use our, our valves to come through and not only secure the license plate, but allow you to air up the bags too. Uh, I kind of like it because it's you know, a little more discreet but easy to get to. Or some people like to make a bracket, some sort, put it around the hitch. Um, our customer today, he's, he uses his truck to uh, uh, tow a fifth wheel camper and so it kind of hangs over and it's kind of got some back issues and stuff it sounds like and so he don't really he can't really get in between that little opening with this trailer up to put air in the bag so we're going to do something a little different uh, and that's what's kind of cool about this you can get creative and kind of mount these wherever you'd like uh, we're actually going to mount up our fittings in the um, uh, behind the fuel cap so why don't we go over there see what we're working with so here we are behind our fuel filler door and uh, I already have one of the sides mounted. Uh, this is the passenger side, but we'll do the driver one together. Um, obviously, wherever you decide to mount this, if you're gonna be drilling through stuff, make sure that you're not gonna drill into something important or you put these in a spot where, you know, you don't want the airline to be bent super tight and kink or anything. So you do need a little space behind there to have a, you know, a good sweeping, uh, bend in it so you don't kink it. But we're a lot more room behind here than what you think though. So what I'm gonna do is take a drill bit. Uh, I don't know what size this is. Just a shade bit bigger than our actual 
fitting there. And let me get this as close as I can. Oh, it looks good. Pull that out. Then I'm going to come in from behind there and get our fitting through there. So before we put this, you know, coming from the back and push us through our hole that we made, you want to take uh, one of the nuts there. And I'm just going to thread that on all the way down. I'm going to reach up behind here and push this through. And we'll show you this in just a sec. From the bottom side, push that through. And you're going to take the rubber washer, push that on, followed by a flat washer, and a star washer. And then another nut. So here's where our airlines come down. Uh, just for reference, we're right in front of the driver's side back tire. Uh, when you route your airlines, make sure to avoid any hot or moving parts, and you can use zip ties to keep them secure. But those lines are gonna come up through here. I got them zip tied to this vent tube, and then they're just gonna go you know, over our frame rail uh, towards the center of our truck. Here's where our airlines uh, come towards the center of the truck. One of them will continue along this way to the passenger side, which we'll show in a minute. This one's gonna loop over here though to the driver's side airbag where it drops down right here. And then that's gonna plug into the hook fitting there. When you hook up your airlines, you wanna make sure that the end has a nice clean cut. So you can use a tool like this or a regular utility knife or a, a tubing cutter. You wanna avoid a regular pair of snips because a lot of times it can kink this and then leak. So, make sure it's straight, no kinks or burrs or anything like that on it. And this is simply just going to push right into that fitting, just like that. And that's all there is to plug in that one in. But as far as our passenger side is concerned, that airline is gonna continue to route through here. There really wasn't anything to zip tie this to, so I did use a couple of these uh, peak lamps that I screwed into the hat channel here to secure this. Because with the exhaust being right here, I wanted to keep it up tight. I don't want to take any chances at drooping down and hitting the muffler and stuff. So that one loops around, drops down, and then plugs into that fitting. Uh, the kit does come with a, a sleeve here. It's to protect the tubing from heat. So before you plug this one in, since the exhaust is somewhat close, put that heat or that uh, heat shield on your airline tube as well. And like I said, drop it down and plug it in. And now that everything's hooked up, we can fill it up full of air and check for leaks. So we'll go ahead and put in between 40 and 60 pounds of air in each bag. And that way we can uh, make sure they're not leaking or anything. Check for leaks. Uh, I simply just sprayed everything down with soapy water, and what we're looking for is for bubbles to rapidly and continuously be forming. Uh, you want to pay special attention to the fitting areas. Um, I like to hit everything just to make sure, but the fitting areas is where they're more than likely to leak if you do have one. Uh, ours, we're in really good shape. I don't see any bubbles forming continuously. Obviously, when you spray it on at first, you'll have some, but as long as they're not continuing, uh, you'll be in good shape. If you do have a leak, let the air out of the system, disconnect the line, you could just push it in and then kind of pull out quickly, recut it, plug it back in, fill it up full air, and check it again. Now we verified uh, everything sealed up. I went ahead and reinstalled our heat shield, and then I'll go ahead and get our spare tire back up into place. But once that's done, uh, that'll kind of wrap everything up. Uh, but that will finish up our look at and our installation of the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 airbags on our 2021 Ford F-350.